You are now about to witness the strength of street knowledge. Hello there, and thank you for tuning into the screencast. I'm Rex Proctor. In the screencast, we are going to show off Build 540. Yes, that is 540. We have built this application 540 times since July 1 of 2016. And we're really proud of this one because it is our Catalina release. And it really says to me that the application is becoming quite substantial. In this build, we're introducing one of the features that I've been wanting for ages, which is the ability to embed the note in the exported movie, or we call burning in into the exported movie. So basically overlaying your notes into the movie so that when you share it with someone else, they can see what you wrote. If they're playing it in QuickTime or VLC, we spent a lot of time on this uh, feature. I mean, it really was a backbreaker, I gotta be honest. But we came out the other end learning a lot and we now know some of the new things that we're going to do. So we spent a lot of time building it so that we can include lots of other different overlays, like when we get into our dashboard features. So you can have little objects like pie charts or whatever sitting on top of the video, and those can be rendered out. So we really thought about this a bit. So you're gonna see us craft this single angle export with notes over time. Now, the first thing though that I wanna go over, since this is our Catalina release, I want you to be aware of Catalina and the tightened security that Apple has included in this operating system. Because when you upgrade to it, and we want you to upgrade as soon as possible, because there are some neat things like Sidecar and a few other things. Sidecar is the really cool one where you can have your iPad be an extended monitor, which I'm, I haven't even played with it yet, but it looks really cool. Now. Let's have a look at the security preferences first and foremost, because you're gonna be getting banged on the head with this a whole bunch. So I'm gonna open up the capture window, and if you've said no, this is our Mikey said no feature. This goes out, to, I must say this, this goes out to Mikey Allen at Sheffield. He likes to say no to all the prompts when things want access, and I get that but make sure that you're reading those first because before we had this little feature, which you can see here is the band icon in the capture view. I spent about six hours puzzling over why Mike's computer would not capture and everyone else's would. So we added this just for Mike. Now, if you click on this, it will take you straight to the security preference that you want to. So here we're gonna enable angles to allow it to capture. I'm gonna go ahead and let it quit it. We'll turn on the microphone. So this, just so you know, this is in System Preferences, Security, and under the Privacy tab. And you're also probably going to get prompted to allow it uh, access to files and folders. I usually give my uh, app here, Angles, the full disk access because I like to write in different locations, not just in my user folder. But just be aware that that's where this stuff is and make sure you're reading those messages. Okay, now we should be sweet and I launch angles and poof, you're going to see me and the shop in the background. So let's close that. Bang. Okay, so that is a big thing in Catalina that you've got to be aware of. Now, let's have a quick look at the new composer export. Let's close that off. And let's just take one clip. So I'm gonna to split to the right. Let's kill that off. We'll create a new composer. And I'm just gonna grab one clip, Option Command B it in there. And let's just add one single note. So I'll go Control Return. This is a note. And you can see that's on top of the video here, right? Scrolling up, we'll make it, we'll make it quite big just for this demonstration and we'll make it a little blacker so you can kind of see what it's resulting. This is an export that is what you see is what you get. So if you turn off a certain note type for a clip, that's what's going to be exported. Just be aware of that. It's great. It includes any of the titles that you put in from Keynote or wherever, any of the still images when you do a still frame and insert an image. Um, also, the um, movie assets that you drop in from third-party applications, such as animations and so on, they will all be rendered. Now, this feature introduces a new setting. This is single angle export with notes settings. This is also available in the timeline. 
And this panel here is a preference, basically. So you set it up, you can now target the folder in which the exports will go to, that's handy, and you can tick these options off and on. So include notes, will obviously include the notes that are on top of the video. Include composer topics, if the export is coming from a composer, will include the topic and the clip number for the topic, and OpenMovie will launch QuickTime Player once the export is complete so you can view it and it kind of prompts you to let you know that the export is actually completed without having to go look at the little uh, progress wheel in the composer or in the timeline. And these are options, the bog standard ones that we like to use for exporting the movie. You might choose 720 or you might choose 1080. I like 1080. There is also an additional option that we've added if you're on a computer that supports HEVC hardware acceleration. Um, this is an older computer so it doesn't, but that will be enabled and you can start to use HEVC. We have a few customers doing that with their captures and so forth. It's great because it reduces bandwidth over the network and it reduces the file storage required for the movie. The workflow is getting closer and closer. I think a few more people will start to use that as uh, other people have newer computers and they're, they're able to share that way. Just be aware with whoever you're sharing the HEV stuff with, they have to make sure that their player or computer will support that playback. And then we have this minimal conversion option, which basically just takes the best guess from the movies that it's trying to export and it rams them out and it tries to do as little re-encoding as possible. So it's quite a bit faster, but it will more than likely result in quite a big file. But if you're in a hurry, that is definitely the option to use. So if I close this, it will then save it and away we go. So every time I use the feature, it's going to export using these options to that directory. So let's go ahead, I'll just begin the export. And you can see here that it is uh, wheeling around getting everything ready and you can also terminate as well now so terminates hooked up on everything and we'll just let that go for a second it will take a little bit of time especially on an older machine now I'm really ramming it right now because I am doing a screen recording and I'm trying to do an export at the same time using those same assets but there is the nice note right over the top all burned in with the topic so that is one of those killer features that we get asked about all the time, and I'm finally glad that it is there. You'll find it probably takes roughly uh, about, for let's say you have an hour of a, a composer, it's probably gonna take close to an hour to render that out. So it's not one, it, it can be faster, but um, if you have a big one, it's gonna take a little bit of time. All right, so let's close off our composer there. And I want to show a couple things in the timeline that I want you to make you aware of. Um, this little feature here is the filter option that will hide rows that are not included in the filter. Now if you turn that on, it's a global setting and so for every timeline that will be enabled, which you can look at the filtering um, screencast and learn more about that option. But just be aware that that is now a global preference and not timeline by timeline. And often if you um, filter something you don't see anything, just be aware that that might be turned on so it might hide rows that you weren't expecting. So just double check that. Now one of the features that was one for me that I really like is the zoom, uh, the quick zooming. So if we zoom the timeline out and we right click on the zoom out thing, we can say remember the zoom and let's zoom it in. I'm constantly doing zooming. So let's show, you know, about 45 seconds here and I right click on the zoom in, I go remember zoom and I can toggle those zoom states by going control Z. And so I can zoom in and out really quickly. And that's handy when you wanna see where you're at in context um, or in, in the timeline overall. So a cool little, just a little clever wrinkle that we've added. Now, the Two that I want to go over that were requested by users are the merging option. So let's create a new timeline. We'll link that timeline up to that. And I want to go over these. So there's an option called merge clip. 
and four button types of clip that mark in the timeline. If you tick that and the time down overlaps a previous clip, it will merge the two clips. So let's have a look at that really quickly. Let's just get this, when you go a little bit past five seconds, jump into mark mode and I click that and now that's spinning around, it's doing its auto up and if I click on that, it will merge these two clips. So now they'll become one. And so you can see that's merged. Let's look at the no merger. And what happens with the no merger is it will separate them. So I click that, the no merger now overlapped on that one. And you'll see that it will make a break. So you can see it tries to calculate the right amount of space between the two clips and then breaks that there. So that goes out to our friends at QPR. Another one that we've been asked for for a long time, and it's almost embarrassing that we haven't had it, is the ability to show in, uh, to show the shortcut for the button when you're in mark mode. So now that appears, well, it's not just in mark mode, but that is button by button, so you can turn that on. We will add some more features to enhance that in terms of location and the ability to set all the buttons to show and hide. Right now, it is a button by button. We're going to surprise everyone with a whole bunch of um, new stuff in the coming weeks around the markup because we're preparing for dashboards and they're gonna go hand in hand in terms of how you edit and develop your dashboards. So those are kind of the main features that I wanted to cover off in this screencast. We're just excited to get out and get you starting to use Catalina. So thank you very much and have a great Catalina experience and go build 540.